Peter, I've got five fixes to the leaks that may be preventing players from developing that effortless one-handed backhand. So let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is the grip. Okay, you want either an eastern backhand or you want a semi-western backhand grip. Okay, now if you use the palm of your, the, uh, your hitting hand, the index knuckle, which would be right here, and the heel of the hand here. Now for an eastern, you're going to put those two checkpoints, the index knuckle on the inside and the heel of the hand, right on the flat surface on top. Okay, that's an eastern backhand grip. You're going to need at least that. You've got to turn it at least that far. Now, semi-western backhand. This little bevel over here, okay, you're going to turn, the, turn your hand more this way towards you, and now you've got a semi-western backhand grip. Now, that automatically closes up the face a little. And this was a grip that uh, Gustavo Kerton uh, really started. And in my mind, he's the one that started the modern one-handed backhand. So if you haven't checked out Gustavo Kerton's backhand, do so. Great backhand. Many players struggle with their one-hander because they're lacking one vital component. And that's what I call the rubber band effect. What is the rubber band effect? Well, it's extra racket take back uh, that allows you to generate tremendous racket head speed at the contact point. You look at all the top backhands today, Federer, Warinka, Gasquet, Dimitrov, Tsitsipas, they all have this vital component. So what it is is this, when you bring the racket back, okay, now remember it's a continual motion, there would be no stops, it's one continual fluid motion. So as you bring the racket back, now I want you to notice that the racket's gonna show up behind my back here. And that's the extra racket take back and that's the rubber band effect. And what you're doing is you're stretching your upper hitting arm, your upper back, and you're pulling it back like a rubber band so that then you can release it. Okay, so now when you first try this, it's, it's going to change your timing slightly. So, you know, because now you're trying to pull the racket back and still be right there at contact. So your timing is going to change, but I guarantee if you get, if you add and if you get this uh, rubber band effect added to your backhand, you're going to have effortless power, okay? So, and it's, it's easy to generate. No matter what somebody hits you, if they hit you a 100-mile-an-hour ball, if you can, you know, get that take back and get that racket out in front, that's the key also. You want to make sure it's out in front. A good foot to a foot and a half in front of the lead foot. So my contact point would be out here. Okay, that is at least a foot to a foot and a half in front of the lead foot. But the, uh, the rubber band effect, it works. It really will help you develop an effortless one-hander. So when you pull that racket back, remember you're stretching your upper arm, your upper back, and then you're dropping it down, of course, you know, you're hitting a topspin backhand. And uh, so the racket's going to go down and then you just release the rubber band. So it's, think of it like this, when you pull that racket back and you're showing that racket behind your back. See, remember, look back here now. You see how that racket's coming into view? Watch behind my back. Okay, you can see that. And when you pull, pull that back and stretch the upper arm and the upper back, it's like you're pulling a rubber band and you just pull it and then release it. We'll look at two backhands in real time 
and then we'll look at one in slow motion and break it down. Okay, here in slow motion, as I turn the shoulders, the racket comes back high. Now I'm setting the feet. Okay, from this point here, now I'm going to start to pull the rubber band. So as I step in with the right foot, the racket's going back, 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 back. Boom. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to start releasing the rubber band. And that's an effortless feel. Okay, once you have the proper grip, now we're going to talk about the back swing and the entire swing pattern. Okay, so from the ready position, you see a, a ball come to your backhand side. You know, you're going to start to turn the shoulders and the racket's going to come back relatively high. Okay, now as you turn, you're going to get set up. Now, remember too, this is one continual swing. There's no stops. So it's one continual fluid motion that's picking up speed so that you reach optimum racket head speed at contact. So you're coming back relatively high. From there, you're going to go down, okay? Now, why are you going down? You're hitting a top spin backhand so you've got to swing low to high you want to get the racket at least a good foot below the contact point okay so let's just say i'm hitting a ball that's about waist high so i'm coming back i've got to drop down below waist high and notice i'm using this hand to help me get the racket down i'm bending the left leg more that also helps me get that racket down now i'm going to start to swing forward but remember too that when you're bending, it's kind of like you're sitting on a chair. But as you swing forward, remember you're going to come up out of the chair. You want your legs and your racket working together. You want them synchronized. So everything that your racket's doing, your body's doing the same thing. So from here again, coming back high, you're going to drop it down. Now you're coming forward and up. So the legs are coming up and forward as well. Now, once you get, first of all, let's say right here, the butt of my racket now is facing the side fence. That's one checkpoint to make sure you're getting that good racket take back. Okay, so you're here back you're dropping it down now you're coming forward and up right before contact you're going to release the forearm and the wrist so as you come through you're releasing right here and then you're just coming all the way up your legs will straighten out on the finish and that's a good checkpoint to make sure you're lifting check your legs see if you've lifted your legs should be straight or at least, you know, that's why players come off the ground. But you don't want to be like this. Because if you stay down, you're going to have forces working in opposite directions. You know, you've got a force going down. And now the racket's uh, trying to go up. So you don't want that. You want to lift as you swing forward. So that's the key. And you want that finish to be as loose as possible up here. Um, some players will actually have the butt of the racket facing in that direction, depending on how loose their shoulder and arm is. An older player like me, I might not get that all the time, but it's not really crucial. The ball is gone. But uh, the bottom line is you want a loose, relaxed hitting arm. So that's basically the swing right there. But I'll show you a little more detail as well. Okay, on this backhand, the contact point is low. It's around waist high or slightly lower. 
Okay, I'm turning, getting the feet set up. I take a nice step in with my right foot. Right there, you can see the butt cap of the racket is facing towards the camera. Okay, I've pulled the rubber band. I'm looking over my shoulder. Right there is where the forearm and the wrist are going to start releasing. And the legs are coming back up now. I'm lifting with my legs. Okay, right there, the contact point, a good foot out in front of the lead foot. Now on the finish, you'll see that the legs continue to lift. On this one, the contact point is up about chest high, but the swing pattern is still the same. Stepping in, butt cap facing towards the camera. I've pulled the rubber band here. I'm looking over my hitting shoulder. Now I'm going to start to release. Right there is where the forearm and the wrist are going to release. Okay, contact point. Notice the hitting arm fully extended. The legs are still lifting and the left arm is staying back. Okay, another thing that all great one-handers have in common. Federer, Warinka, Gasquet, Dimitrov, um, Tsitsipas, they have loose shoulders, okay? So work on loosening up your shoulders and stretching your shoulders. It's going to help your one-hander. I like to do shoulder dislocates. Now you get yourself a stretch band. This is a pretty strong one here, but I've been working with this for a while. And you just, you know, a shoulder dislocate, you're coming up over your head and back and down. And, you know, do this 10 or 15 times, do, you know, three sets. And the other thing you can do with the stretch band is stretch the upper back. So you might put the band in front and then you're just stretching back. You're trying to strengthen your upper back. Okay, you want your upper back to pull back. You know, you've seen those guys on the finish where, you know, they're going and the other hand is going the opposite way. So you want the hands to go the opposite way. So stretch band, very good tool to loosen up the shoulders and strengthen the upper back. That's going to give you a better one hander. I've got a real simple drill you can do that's going to help you get the feel of that rubber band effect and hitting with a real loose hitting arm. I want you to take an old racket or some rackets and I want you to throw them over the fence. <laughs> that's right. But please, when you do this, be careful. We don't want to hit anybody in the head with a racket. But um, this is really going to help you get that feel. So I want you to just start in that ready position, bring your racket back high, pull the rubber band, come down, because remember, you've got to get the racket below the contact point. So pull it back down and then just release it. So that's really going to help you get that feel of the rubber band effect, having a loose, relaxed hitting arm. And then what you do is when you go out to practice with your buddy or you're with another pro, dial in and recreate the same feeling as that. Recreate the same feeling. And even if you lose control, don't worry about it. Just keep trying it and eventually you'll get the control. Okay, the next drill I want you to do is just some simple drop hits from around the uh, service line. 
So you're going to put your non-dominant hand over your hitting arm like this and just drop the ball out in front. Make sure you drop it well out in front because remember you want that contact point at least a foot to a foot and a half in front of your lead foot. So I'm going to drop it out in front so I can step into it. So you're just dropping it out and then one continual swing and just you know stay loose with the hitting arm you want to stay as loose as possible and that's going to also give you that feel that effortless feel Peter, thanks for the opportunity of being part of TennisCon 2. I really appreciate it. I hope your viewers benefit from that video and take that one-hander up a notch. And if any of you are here, you know, coming to Naples, please give me a holler and we'll get together. All the best and happy backhands.